How goes everyone? Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Today's subject matter is, um, I've talked about this before, but it seems like the problem is steadily increasing. I'm going to be talking about lots of families going into debt nowadays. Now, this shouldn't surprise anybody. Um, I've read various articles about this specific subject matter, talked to a lot of people, and now, you know, a lot of people are falling in debt now, not just because they want to live the extravagant life, but just so many people want to perceive that they are middle class and to, for them to stay in the middle class a lot of people are going into debt for various reasons that i'm going to discuss here we know that this is happening due to a multitude of things that are keeping people financially stagnated or financially falling behind the article that i read stated that um when you what um from what i see and what from what most regular people see here and are actually going through in regular working people um it's definitely the truth that they are falling behind, you know, maintaining a middle class lifestyle. Basically, you know, it consists of having a car, which is usually a car payment, college degree, which is college student loan debts, and, you know, houses, whether it's renting or you own a home, a lot of people cannot afford it anymore. Medical care has significantly gone up, um, steadily more costly for regular stagnated working people. So, you know, a lot of these things are keeping a lot of regular working people down. I notice the people that have the same amount of debts, however, they have two to three families living with them. And with that co financial cohesiveness, they're actually able to get avoid the debt trap and actually buy assets. But that's neither here nor there. As a matter of fact, for over two decades, most people's wages have been stagnated when um, people or when people receive a raise, it barely been ever really meets inflation anymore. Even though unemployment is down, wages are da down or stagnated all at the same time. And according to the article I was reading, consumer debt mortgages have climbed to about $4 trillion from a national standpoint, higher than it's ever been before. Mortgage debt has you know, slid due to financial crisis back in 2007. And I remember those days of 2007 when I saw you know, um, a lot of people lose their homes jobs were dis disappeared so it was definitely a rough time then you have student loan debt which is totaled to about 1.5 trillion dollars as of last year in 2018. this is one of the reasons why for me when it comes to education i will only pay for education that i know that is going to enhance my business and not get more get me another job now the article went into the high amount of auto um, auto debt, you know, basically car debt has gone up to about 40% and in the last decade up to about $1.3 trillion. A lot, lot of debt going on here, especially when it comes to people who want to try to keep up with the Joneses. And that's why I drive an old car and when I go out to town, usually I'll get a, which is not that often, I'll get a rental car or I'll end up going on a plane, you know, so it's like it's, it's an expense. But it's not an expense I'm paying 12 months out of the year. It's, it's, an, it's an expense I'm paying five months out of the year. So, and um, it's not a guaranteed expense. So I can deal with that. Not having a car payment or not having student loan debt payments can help one save up a good nest egg if one counts their dollars and cents correctly. The crazy thing is that the average loan for a new car is up to, up to an inflation adjusted by about 11% to in, in, in a decrease, I mean, in a decade. It's, it's gone up to that much to about, you know, the average car now is about $32,000 for a brand new one, at least. According to an analysis data uh, that was um, taken from credit reporting firm Experian, one thing that the, that is back in a big, big way is unsecured personal loans. And this is due to a lack of financial education and people that are in desperate need of money from title car loan services. You know, the, you know, fast, fast cash services where you can get a couple thousand dollars or a couple hundred dollars, but it's like, what is it, the interest is like 50% interest or something to that effect. It varies, but it, it's kind of insane. You know, let's just call it what it is, <laughs> you know, and obviously, you know, when it comes down to medical issues, that's, you know, I've had people I know they've gone into debt because of their, um, because of being sick. You know, and you, whether they have insurance or they don't have insurance, you know, they've kind of just gotten screwed over in a sense, financially. Um, so the debt surge is partly designed um, by, by a byproduct of low borrowing costs. The Federal Reserve engineered after the financial crisis to get the economy moving. And these things had to happen. It has reshaped things for both borrowers and lenders. I received those, I remember those days when so many for sale signs went up in my neighborhood and neighborhoods all across the United States. 
you know, neighborhoods, certain neighborhoods became vacant over the United States. The article stated that when it comes to credit, consumers increasingly need it, you know, obviously because companies increasingly can't sell their goods without it, you know, so it's just like it's it goes hand in hand when it comes to credit, um, which, you know, uh, you know, it, and it's one of those things that it's actually it is what it is, you know, um, because you know to sell to sell products you know people need money and if they don't have money then they need credit a lot of people have that credit get it mentality you know um because it accounts for the consumer spending for more than about two-thirds of G gdp um and they actually would struggle without the plentiful supply of credit you know mar all markets all businesses would struggle no credit no nothing i mean most people would not be able to even afford a new car without credit you know getting new appliances for the home without credit i mean just you know sometimes even taking out loan i mean getting a loan a lot of people will actually max out their credit cards to put a down payment on something you know it's just credit is the lifeline of the united states <laughs> parts of the world really but it's definitely a lifeline of working americans so now the upside to all the debt falls into a vote of confidence in the future, meaning that the lines of credit could open up economic opportunities for people. But the downside for most people is that it creates economic risk for people uh, who have jobs but are at risk of losing their jobs due to another economic meltdown or technology taking one's job away. What really makes things unsustainable because there are a multitude of jobs out there nowadays, but most jobs are contractor positions that aren't as secure, as steady as the job markets were during my parents' and grandparents' generation. You know, most people don't work 30 years at one job anymore. It's the people are constantly jumping around from job to job. You're lucky if somebody's at a job for three to five years, you know, because jobs come and go, people get stagnated, they want the, the wages to go up and everybody knows for most people, for them to get a raise, a, a significant raise, they gotta get a new job. <laughs> go to another company, go to another government agency, you know, the list goes on and on. Median household income in the United States was about, in 2017, 61,000 at the, at the end of 2017, according to the Census Bureau. When inflation is taken into account, um, that is just ab above the 1999 level. Without adjusting for inflation over the, the three-year decade, um, over, the, over the last three decades through 2017, incomes are up to about 135 percent average but tuition um is going has has gone up significantly for a four-year degree at about 135 percent you know so it's not it's barely keeping up with that with the, the rate of colleges going up college tuition going up however you know because like i said that went up 135 percent as far as wages but college tuition actually went up to 549 percent so it's like i said it's uneven balance and you see this picture is trying to even the balance out and it's very hard when you have so much debt being accumulated, you know, especially when it comes to inflation. And according to the data for the College Board, this is all accurate. And on the same basis, average per capita, personal health care expenditures rose to about 276% over a slightly shorter period, 1990 to 2017, according to the data from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And average housing prices swelled 188% over those decades, those, the last three decades. So according to S&P CoreLogic Case Shelter National Home Price Index. So it's a lot going on. And one thing I can say for sure, it's that um, nothing's really meeting inflation when it boils down to it. And um, a lot of jobs are just being stagnated. A lot of work is being outsourced. A lot of work is being automated. Like I said, no, these conversations aren't being had enough. And even then with that being said, a lot of people are trying their best to keep up, keep up with the Joneses with their lifestyle. So they're getting into debt, 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 and more debt. You know, there's not a conversation for a lot of people of, hey, I need to save my money. I need to invest my money. I need to partner up with other people. Everybody still has this Lone Ranger thing. It is really hurting a lot of Americans. A lot of, I notice a lot of immigrants and smart people who are actually teaming up with each other. They're making bank on the American economy. And I just think that's awesome. So it's just got to change the way you look at life and the way you make money. Uh, last but definitely not least, uh, the article addressed how so many regular working people who make six-figure salaries 
uh, are barely making um, barely making it as well. After reading the stories from families that are barely getting by, and I, it was it was insane that they did not have uh, any side hustles, no significant hard assets, and no family businesses. I've said it before, and I will say it again to the day that I die. Having multiple streams of income is no longer an option; it is a must. Because in the article that I read about all these specific families, they not only did they not have side hustles, but they all made six figure salaries. So they, they, they were living proof that you make a six figure salary and don't have a, a side hustle or a backup plan. And then if a government shutdown occurs or your job, you get laid off or your hours get reduced to part time, all those things that I just mentioned, put a cork in these people's lives and they were barely scraping by as is. And even some had to pawn stuff, sell stuff in other capacities or sell, get rid of their homes because they weren't making the same amount of money. And to me, it's just like they invested in themselves when it came to education, but a lot of people are not doing enough to invest in themselves when it comes to owning assets and businesses. So it might be in your best interest so that you can end up like this family over here. Okay, you wanna be debt free. And if you're gonna be in debt, be in good debt, meaning that it's debt that's actually gonna pay you residuals every month. That's what I consider good debt. That's what most people consider good debt. So hopefully you guys liked the video. Um, that was a quick one been a long day so i figured i'd just knock this one out um and always always remember that if you don't own the company i mean if you own the company you can't get fired so just um keep that in mind because whether you have a high salary middle salary salary or a low salary you're always going to be at risk even if you're in business you are always at risk but when you have multiple streams of income and you're saving and investing not just spending and having fun then you put yourself in a better position financially to ensure that your financial security, because that's all we have nowadays. We don't have pensions anymore. We have, we have to be on financial security. So it's just something to think about food for thought, nutrition for the whole brain. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please share, please like, and, uh, Hey, see you guys next time. Take care.